Hi, my name is Ken Shackle. I'm here at the UC Davis Arboretum to demonstrate the use of this device here called the pressure chamber for measuring water stress in trees. I'm going to use this pine tree here, this Pinus sylvestris or scotch pine, but before we talk about stress, we need to know a little bit about how water moves through trees. The first thing is that water evaporates from leaves, and when it evaporates from the leaves, the leaves need to draw that water from the stem, otherwise they would dry out and die, pretty much like a cut flower does in a vase if the vase runs dry. Well, the only way they can get that water is to pull it from the stem, and of course then the stem has to pull that water from the branch, and the branch from the trunk, and the trunk from the roots, and ultimately the roots have to pull the water from the soil. Now, it's the tension on this water caused by all this pulling that's what that what's this device is uh, meant to me measure. So, uh, when the tension gets too high, we say that the tree is under water stress. Now, there's a lot of reasons why uh, the tree may be under stress. For instance, if the soil is dry, then it takes more tension for the roots to pull water out of the soil, and that means it takes more tension for everything to pull on the water. But dry soil is only one reason why there may be more tension on the water in the trees and why the tree may be under stress. Uh, so rather than measure the dryness of the soil or the dryness of the atmosphere or another indirect measure of stress, we like to try to measure directly on the tree using the pressure chamber. We like to think of it as basically asking the tree to tell us how much stress it's under. Now, well, you could just ask me. Uh, did somebody say something? I did. Uh, is there somebody behind that tree? Does it look like there's someone behind me? What, are you blind? Mr. White Smock Pocket Protector just learned to walk erect yesterday and now he's Mr. Know-It-All. I am the tree. I'm standing right next to you. The name's MacNeedle. Angus MacNeedle. Hmm. Uh, nice to meet you. I didn't realize trees could talk. Well, it's either I can talk, or you've been hanging around the psilocybin section of the greenhouse, uh, laddie. Uh, that's certainly not the case. Um, well, uh, I was just saying... I know what you're saying, Boyle. I didn't just sprout out of the ground yesterday, you know. You think your little toy there can tell you something you don't have the manners to ask me for yourself? Well, I doubt I'm it. sorry. I'd love to know how you feel. About what? The fact that I'm next to the shadiest part of the building and that every dog around here is itching to use me for a urinal? Um, oh, just no, grand. I was thinking more how you feel in terms of water. Um, uh, are you getting enough water or are you too dry? Well, uh, I've been drier. And I've been wetter. Does that narrow it down for you, Professor Big Brain? Well, one advantage of this method is that it gives us a value for the stress in the tree, um, and we found through research that this stress is very well related to the different symptoms of str uh, stress that trees exhibit. For instance, um, leaf and, sh and Needles. Sh shoot growth are very sensitive to stress. I'm sorry? I'm a pine. I've got needles, not leaves. Or did you skip Trees 101 at school? At any rate, of course, if I'm short of water, the last thing I want to do is make more needles, because then I'll need that much more water. Better to grow more roots, I say. That's right. Uh, that's a very reasonable response to stress. That is, growing more roots and less shoots. Um, but that's a long-term response to stress. There's shorter-term responses to stress also, for instance, uh, such as closing of stomata. The idea of the measurement is that the uh, tension on the water in the plant is transmitted pretty much throughout the plant because all the parts are pretty well interconnected by the xylem tissue. What's xylem tissue? Basically, xylem is composed of microscopic tubes that are basically hollow cells with very thick walls, and, they, and water moves through those cells pretty much like water moves through pipes. The thickness of the walls is very important, though, because that makes the tubes very strong, um, and that way they don't collapse under the tension. That's why when you put a lot of them together, you get wood. You mean that wood is another name for xylem? Uh, yeah, basically, yes. Well, why don't you just call it that then, lad? That's a trouble with you botanists. You've got to have a fancy name for everything. What, you get paid <laughs> for every word you make up? Okay, well... The, the tension on the water in the xylem can actually pull water out of the living cells. And if that happens too much, then things like leaves and shoots can wilt. I'm a Scots pine. I don't wilt. Uh, yes. Well, certainly your woody parts aren't going to uh, wilt. But basically, we can measure the tension in the xylem 
by using a sample of your tissue and finding out how much pressure it takes to press water out of that tissue through the xylem. Uh, the more pressure it takes, the more stress it's under, the more stress you're under. In any case, we still need a sample of your tissue. Normally, we use a leaf, but in your case, we'll need to use a chute with some needles on it. Is that okay? Okay. So what I've done here is cover a small chute with a shiny plastic bag. The bag stops the chute from losing water, even if the stomata are open, and after about 10 minutes or so, the tension on the water in the chute should equilibrate with the tension on the water where it's attached, here at the stem. In scientific terms, we'd say that water potential equilibrium has been reached throughout the chute, but there's not enough time to go into that in detail. Ugh, thank God for that. Um, anyway, because the leaves or needles are bagged and their water potential has equilibrated with the stem where they're attached, then we call this stem water potential. And when we find the amount of pressure that's just enough to start extracting water from the chute, then this is the water potential that we'll be measuring. Uh, have you got a device that gauges boredom, Mr. Excitement? Uh, not that I know of. So now we'll remove this small chute. Uh, is that okay, Angus? Go ahead, you weed. Do your worst. Not too many, though. It's not like I'm made of these things. Uh, well, actually, uh, you are. <laughs> Smart, Aspen. So I'm going to take this chute, trim it off a little bit so that it fits through the seal well, and then put it through this rubber seal in this pressure chamber. There it is sticking out. Tighten up the seal, and then trim it off just a bit so that it's nice and flat. Uh, it's good not to have too much tissue sticking out of the pressure chamber because that can cause an error. This particular pressure chamber works like a bicycle pump. There are many other types and they all basically do the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at that stem and see that it's dry, which it is, um, and then we'll have a have the uh, camera take a look and see what that stem looks like. You can see that the woody tissue in the middle appears dry. Some plants, like this pine, have resin ducts, and sometimes resin will come out, so that needs to be dried off, and you need to wait for that to stop before you try to take the measurement. Sometimes tightening the seal real good will help stop that, and you don't have to worry about crushing the xylem. It's pretty tough stuff, like Angus here, right? You're going the right way for a needle in a very uncomfortable place, Sonny Jim. So right now I'm going to start pumping. Um, and watching for water as I pump down. Since this pressure chamber works like a bicycle pump, the pressure only goes up when you're pumping down, so that's only when you have to watch it. This particular gauge right now is reading in bars. One bar is about uh, 14 and a half pounds per square inch. Uh, and different species are different in terms of how much, uh, how much pressure is required and how much is corresponds to a lot of stress. For instance, 20 bars, which is about 300 pounds per square inch, would be fairly moderate stress for an almond tree, but very severe stress for a grapevine, and it would probably kill a walnut tree. Uh, right now, we're at about four and a half, and I still don't see any, any water coming out. Ah, there it is, okay? So the reading is 5.2. And I'm going to let a little bit of the pressure off to make sure that the water goes right back inside the stem, which it did. That's why we call it a balance point. If the chamber pressure is higher than the balance point, water will flow out of the stem. If it is less, then the water will stay in the stem. So let's take a look at what the stem looks like just below the balancing point. You got me at the edge of my roots, Professor Tantalizing. Angus, do you want to see this? Uh, sure. Okay. Why not? I like to think of this as like measuring blood pressure, except instead of pressurizing an arm to stop the flow of blood, what you're doing is pressurizing the tissue to start the flow of water out. Uh, you should be able to see it about now. What do you think? That's my... my... I, I'm feeling a little woozy. Oh, no. Hmm. I guess he fainted. Well, that's about it for the pressure chamber. A very handy device that's uh, useful for both plant physiology and plant ecology because it tells us a lot about how plants respond to water stress and uh, what they do about it. Uh, so thanks very much for your attention. He was looking kind of... Uh,
kind of pale, kind of flesh colored. Feels a bit clammy. Uh, I'm oh, sure he'll be okay. Oh, mommy. Oh, 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 o